Hey, good morning, everyone. Can someone confirm that I can be heard, please? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to start out with a couple of announcements. Um, first, uh, class did very well on the first quiz. Uh, the mean was uh, 69%. I'm allowed to uh, boost that up to 70. So uh, I've asked Dr. Van Hook to add 1% to everyone's scores uh, so that the mean uh, uh, will be uh, 70%. Um, I also uh, want to make a quick announcement about uh, the homework that's due next week. There's a problem that uh, has caused issues in the past where you draw in the, the rays for ray tracing. And uh, if you try to draw uh, the ray to look like uh, that one shown, um, it won't accept the answer. Um, but if you draw it so that it uh, bounces off of that plane, it will. So please keep that in mind when you're working through these, uh, these questions. Uh, so today we're gonna um, continue talking about lenses and ray tracing, and then we'll uh, get more quantitative and talk about the, uh, the lens equation. Um, and we will also uh, briefly discuss what happens when you have multiple lenses. Um, and finally, we'll talk about uh, mirrors uh, covering uh, virtual images, real images, and uh, I'll show you what uh, infinity looks like. So um, with thin lenses, there are three sets of rays that are relevant. Uh, and those uh, rays are um, uh, similar but different for converging or convex versus diverging or concave lenses. So let me go through uh, those cases again, just to remind you. Uh, so for converging lenses, if a ray is coming in parallel to uh, the central axis of the lens, um, which is down here, this is the central axis, then when it emerges from the lens, it will go through the far focal point. If the ray uh, goes through the near focal point and then hits the lens, it will emerge going parallel to the main axis. And finally, if the ray goes through the center of the lens, it will continue on through uh, without being bent. So those are the three rays for a converging lens. For a diverging lens, uh, the situation is similar but different. So the rays that come in uh, parallel to the main axis get bent in such a way that they look like they came back from, they emerged from the near focal point. In a similar way, uh, rays that are coming in that are pointed towards the far focal point, they look as though they were going towards the far focal point. In fact, they are headed in that direction before they hit the lens. When they do hit the lens, they will emerge parallel, all of them. And finally, just like with the converging lens, for a diverging lens, a ray that goes through uh, the center of the lens uh, will not be bent. Okay, so those are the, uh, the three sets of rays that we're going to use uh, in general for ray tracing. And let me show you how that works for uh, this example. Um, so we normally indicate uh, an object um, by using an arrow or some sort of uh, familiar object. Um, and the reason we choose uh, something like an arrow is that it has an orientation. So, you know, it's pointing up or pointing down. And usually the object is chosen to be an arrow pointing up. And that way we can tell whether uh, an image will be um, uh, upright or inverted, depending on whether that image arrow is pointing up like the object arrow or pointing down. And in this case, uh, just getting a little ahead of ourselves, you can see that the arrow is pointing down, the image arrow. Um, so the next uh, thing to realize is that this uh, object, this green arrow with a high H, um, is uh, emitting or reflecting light. And the light that we care about for purposes of finding where the image is, is just the tip of the arrow the light that's coming from the tip of the arrow. There's light coming from all over the arrow, but we're gonna choose the tip of the arrow so that we can figure out where the tip of the image arrow is located. 
And then we'll be able to extrapolate from that to figure out uh, you know, everything else we need to know about the image relative to the object. So uh, we're gonna choose the three rays, just like the three that we talked about on the previous slide. So the ray that's coming in parallel like this, once it hits the lens, goes through the focal point on the other side. The ray that is traveling uh, directly towards and goes through the center just goes on unimpeded. So that's there. And finally, uh, the ray that goes through uh, the focal point on the left side, when it hits the lens, will emerge parallel to the main axis. That's that third ray. Where those three rays, or in fact, any two of those three rays meet, defines uh, where the, the, the tip of the image arrow will be located. And the way to think of that is if you're looking over here, so here is uh, your eye looking at towards the lens, what you will see is uh, these rays here emerging from this point, the very tip of that uh, image arrow. So you will say, oh, that's where the tip of the arrow is. And if we chose some other point on the object, like you know, in the middle of that, of that um, arrow, uh, we would then have a point somewhere in the middle of the image where the rays look like they were coming. Um, so because these rays are actually coming from the image, we say that the image is real, and more about that in a minute. Um, and from this uh, figure, you can also calculate just using uh, similar triangles, um, what the magnification will be. And that's given by this expression here, minus S prime over S. And the minus sign is due to a convention. Um, and in this particular case, it tells you that the, the image is inverted relative to the object. So let me do some example problems now uh, of ray tracing. And after we've done a few of these, then we'll uh, get more quantitative and use the lens equation so we can calculate precisely where the image is and what its magnification is. But ray tracing gives you a good estimate uh, for these quantities. So uh, first, I want to draw your attention to these reference figures over on the right, uh, which show for uh, convex lenses and for concave lenses, what the images uh, look like from ray tracing for the uh, object either inside or outside the focal length of the lens. Uh, and we'll define the focal length later, um, but it's where all of uh, the parallel rays uh, get focused uh, from the lens. And so in this particular example uh, shown here, the object is outside of the focal length. So the focal length is labeled F and it's uh, 10 centimeters. And the object is out at a distance S, which in this case is 20 centimeters. So it's outside of the focal length. And let's uh, think about what happens now to uh, the rays that are coming out of the tip of the arrow. Now we can choose you know, a ray that's going off like this and ask what's happening to it, but that's pointless because we want to figure out what's happening with the light that goes through the lens. So we're gonna choose the three special rays. There's one, it's going parallel uh, to the axis. And so when it emerges, it'll go through the focal point on the right-hand side of the lens. The ray that's going through the focal point on the left-hand side of the lens will emerge parallel on the right-hand side. And finally, the ray that goes through the center will go right through the center and be undiverted. And so you can see that we have an image that's going to be of the arrow that's going to be over there somewhere. So on the right-hand side of the lens, and it's going to be inverted. And that follows what this uh, reference figure 
uh, over in the top left of that figure shows, those are the three rays. And here it's drawn uh, a little bit more nicely uh, so you can see. Uh, so here is where the image is labeled H prime. And we derive that image, which is a real image because the light is actually coming out of there, um, coming out of that image. Um, we have now the, uh, the tip of the arrow. We know where that is so we can draw in the rest of the arrow. Okay. So here we have a case where the lens uh, is the same as before. So it has a 10 centimeter focal uh, length. So that's given by F. But now the object is at a distance uh, six centimeters in front of the lens. So it's closer in, it's, it's, uh, it's inside the focal length of the lens. So what I'd like you to do is uh, try to sketch what the uh, do ray tracing and sketch what the image will look like. So uh, as a little hint, this is the relevant uh, reference object, reference diagram, I should say. So please try to, uh, to sketch this if you have a little piece of paper. Or if you can write on your screen, even better. Okay, so let's draw some of the uh, relevant uh, rays, one of the two of the three, or maybe all three of the three rays. We'll start out with the one that's going parallel to the axis. Uh, that's gonna go through the, uh, the focal point on the other side. Um, the ray that goes through the center will continue on undiverted. And the ray that looks like uh, it, it's, if you extrapolate it back, is coming from the focal point. So this one here, um, well, I can't really draw it in that well here, sorry. We can just stick with those two rays actually for now. If we extrapolate them back, Where they meet is where the tip of the arrow of the image will be. So if you're looking over here, what you see is the tip of the arrow back over here somewhere behind the lens. So is this a real or a virtual image? You can answer in the chat. So is the light actually coming from it or is it not? And this is a virtual image, that's correct. So the light is not actually coming from uh, this point over here at the uh, upper left of the image. Uh, it's, it's actually coming from uh, somewhere else, but the lens makes it look like it's apparently coming from that point. So this is a virtual image. So we can draw um, all of the, the three rays and I didn't draw the, uh, this third ray last time. Um, so we drew uh, this ray that went through the focal point, this one that went straight through the center. And then the third one is this one here, which emerges parallel to the main axis. And, and that's because if you extrapolate it back, it passes through the focal point on the left-hand side. So it's effectively a ray that is coming in the same direction as a ray going through the focal point. And so when it passes through the lens, it will emerge uh, going parallel. Good. So here's another uh, case, but this is now a diverging lens, it has a focal length 
of minus 15 centimeters. And we're putting the object right at the focal distance. So it's also at 15 centimeters. And notice that the focal length here is given as minus 15 centimeters, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and uh, we'll talk about more about that in detail um, when we talk about the conventions, the sign conventions uh, for the lens equation. Let's just take that uh, as a given right now. So for this particular problem, um, we have to use uh, one of these two cases um, on the right-hand side of the, the figure on the right uh, for the concave. And if you uh, draw the various rays, what you'll get is, is the following. So the image is the dark arrow, uh, a ray that's coming out parallel to the main axis will get diverted such that it looks like it's coming from the focal point. So that's what this, this dashed line indicates. It looks like it's coming from that point back there, which is the focal point in this case. The ray that's going uh, straight through the center will, um, I'm sorry, the ray that's going towards the focal point on the other side, that's what this dashed line is meant to indicate, um, will emerge parallel to the main axis. And finally, the ray that goes uh, through the center will continue undiverted. So now if you're um, over here and this is your eye and you're looking at the situation, you see you know, a ray going like this and a ray going like that and one going like that. The angles here are exaggerated to make it a little easier to see what's going on. And what you will do is your eye will project um, these three rays back to their origin point, which is right here, right at the tip of the H prime arrow at uh, point P prime. So that's where the image will be. Will this be a real or a virtual image? So are the rays actually coming out of that arrow or not? That's right, this is a virtual image because the rays are not physically coming out of that uh, image arrow. They just appear to be coming from there. Good. Okay, so now I'd like to become, uh, to get a little more quantitative about things. Uh, so I'm going to talk uh, about the lens equation in sort of general terms, and then we'll uh, narrow down to the specific application that uh, we use uh, for lenses. So um, with a little bit of trigonometry, we can, uh, well, it's maybe more than a little bit. Um, the book derives uh, this expression over here for the situation where you have two media, one with index refraction N1 and the other with index refraction N2, and a spherical surface uh, in between the two at the interface. And if the object is at point P, a distance S away from that spherical interface, and the image is defined to be at a distance uh, S prime, away uh, from the interface. So the image point is over here at the point labeled P prime. Then uh, this equation that I originally circled uh, is satisfied. This value of R here is the radius of curvature. And the radius of curvature is defined uh, as follows. So here is the radius of curvature drawn on the figure and that basically means, well, if I could draw a, uh, a circle of radius r, you know, that's what it would look like. And that little, this little segment here is part of a circle of radius r. I didn't draw that circle so well, but hopefully you get the idea. A circle of radius r would include uh, that spherical interface there. Okay. There is a sign convention indicated over there in the lower right-hand corner. And uh, I'll be providing those in these slides, but this is not something I expect you to memorize. And in fact, it's on the formula sheet. You might want to use that for reference as you go through uh, the, uh, the homework, for example. 
So we can adapt this equation for thin lenses um, that have two refracting surfaces by treating one refracting surface initially and finding what the image is uh, produced by that, by that first refracting surface, and then use that image as the object for the second refracting surface and see what kind of image that produces. And then the resulting image will be the image that you get from these two refracting surfaces. So that's what's shown uh, here, sort of illustrated, uh, sort of sketched out. We have two different lenses, or two different uh, refracting surfaces, I mean, uh, on one lens. Uh, there's one refracting surface, and here's the other. So they have two different radii of curvature. This is the most you know, general case. And just so you know, uh, what we're going to treat, actually, is the case where the two uh, lenses or the two refracting surfaces are uh, symmetrical and they have the same radii of curvature. So the lenses we're going to deal with look more like that. It simplifies things. So if you go through the, uh, the algebra and the trigonometry, um, this expression that we wrote down uh, before for a single surface now becomes uh, this expression, which is fairly simple. It says one over the object distance plus one over the image distance, S prime, is equal to one over the focal length. Where the focal length is defined by this equation here, uh, which depends on the index refraction of uh, the material like glass out of which the lens is made and the index refraction of uh, air, which is taken to be one. So that's where that, that one comes from. And then there are the two different radii of curvature of uh, the two different sides of the lens. And you might say, uh-oh, uh if we have a symmetrical lens, which is what I just said we're going to be using instead of these more complicated asymmetrical lenses, uh, don't those two terms cancel out because the two radii of curvature will be the same. And the answer is uh, the magnitudes of the radii of curvature are the same, but by the uh, definition and the convention here, um, one of these R1 and R2 will be the negative of the other. And so we'll basically get uh, a one over R plus a one over R from this expression or you know, a two over R. So uh, the, the, there will be a, uh, a focal length even for a symmetrical lens. So let me do an example problem. Um, this is a diverging lens. And we can sketch, first of all, using ray tracing, where we expect the image to be. So again, uh, a parallel ray gets bent to look like it's coming from the focal point. Um, a ray that's going um, towards the far focal point will, look like, will come out going straight. And finally, a ray that's going through the center will continue to go through the center. And where these rays all look like they're coming from is right here, the tip of that arrow H prime. But let's uh, use the lens equation to calculate this and to confirm what our ray tracing suggests. So we put in uh, for S prime, um, the minus 30 centimeters. I'm sorry, that's F. So F is minus 30 centimeters. And I'm using the sign convention here for a, a diverging lens. Uh, the, the, the focal length, if you look back at the previous um, definition of the conventions, is minus, is, is a negative number. So it's minus uh, 30 centimeters. And so that's what this is. And then S is 60 centimeters, because we're told that the object is 60 centimeters in front of a diverging lens with a minus 30 centimeter focal length. And then uh, I want you to be aware that it can be you know, slightly uh, tricky to deal with uh, the, the fractions here. So just be a little careful when you're doing this kind of subtraction. So one over minus 30 minus one over 60 is equal to minus one over 20. And one way you can uh, do that is uh, to
to make them both be uh, 60, have 60 centimeters in the denominator. So I can make that uh, from one over minus 30 to two over minus 60 centimeters. And then uh, this whole thing here will be minus uh, three over 60 centimeters, uh, which is just minus one over 20 centimeters. And then we can solve for S prime and it's minus 20 centimeters. So that will be um, minus 20 centimeters is this distance here. And we can also calculate how big the image will be by using uh, this expression, minus S prime over S. And if you do that, you get a positive one third, which tells you two things. The positive sign tells you that the uh, image has the same orientation as the object. So in this case, they're both upright, pointing up. And the, uh, the magnitude, the 0.33, tells you that the image is one third, in this case, the size of the object. So lastly, I'd like to cover a problem using two lenses. Um, and the idea here is to use uh, the image of one lens as the object for the second lens and then find its image. And that will be the image of the two lens combination. So these two lenses here have two different focal lengths, plus 24 and plus nine centimeters. The object is initially six centimeters to the left of the first lens, and the two lenses are 10 centimeters apart. So bearing all that in mind, uh, let's go through the lens equation. So the first thing that I recommend doing in problems like this is to either using the reference diagram or using ray tracing, uh, just figure out roughly where that image is going to be. So the image for this first lens where the object is inside the focal length, so the object is six centimeters away from the lens and the lens has a 24 centimeter focal length, so it's inside the focal length, will be a virtual image that's gonna be a bit larger and uh, in this case, to the left of the object. So we can go through uh, using the lens equation to find this, and that's shown below there. So that equation where we're solving for S prime uh, will give us that S prime is minus eight centimeters. So that means that this distance here is eight centimeters. And if you calculate what the magnification is, uh, we'll get 1.33, a positive number, which means that the image is upright and it's about you know, one third uh, as larger than uh, the object. So now we're gonna use that image that we just created and just determined was there from the first lens as the object for the second lens. It will be a distance 18 centimeters away from the second lens, which has a focal length of nine centimeters. I got this uh, eight centimeters here, 18 centimeters here, from the uh, 10 centimeter separation between the lenses plus the eight centimeters to the left of the first lens that this image uh, appears. So that gives us 18 centimeters between the image of the first lens and the second lens. So we can now um, use this uh, information to figure out what S prime is. And that's done in that expression down below. And you get uh, it's 18 centimeters, positive 18 centimeters. So the arrow is gonna be over here somewhere, the image. And its orientation uh, is going to be inverted from uh, this image arrow, which also was uh, um, uninverted from the original object. Um, and it's not gonna be uh, increased or decreased in size because we, the magnitude here is, is 1.0. So the final uh, image is gonna be over here somewhere. It's gonna be 1.33 times as large as the original object and pointing in the opposite direction, inverted. Okay, 
So I'd like to now transition to talking about spherical mirrors, which are actually quite similar to uh, lenses. There are two different kinds of spherical mirrors, concave and convex. Uh, so those are shown here. So this is a concave mirror. And the diagram here is meant to indicate that this surface that I'm just uh, uh, highlighting in blue is the reflecting surface. And to the right of that, we have a convex mirror and the reflecting surface is likewise highlighted there. And you see that when uh, rays come in uh, parallel to the central axis of a concave mirror, they get bounced off obeying the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection and they go through this focal point. So that's the, defined as the focal point of a concave mirror. And uh, similarly, but differently for a convex mirror, if you have parallel rays coming in, they will bounce off also obeying the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, um, but they will look like they're coming from the focal point of this convex mirror, which is on the other side of the mirror. So just in case it's not clear what I mean by angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, uh, what you need to do is look at you know, the plane where of the mirror right in the small region where this ray comes in and hits and then draw the perpendicular to that. And this angle and this angle are the angle of uh, reflection and the angle of incidence respectively. Those are equal. And you can draw a similar thing uh, over here for the concave mirror. Okay, but we're not gonna worry about uh, the fine level of detail uh, of uh, angle of incidence, angle of reflection for these spherical mirrors, but we're gonna treat them more um, you know, uh, broadly and, and discuss what happens when rays are parallel or, or when they go through the focal point and so on. Um, so as with lenses, um, mirrors can also uh, be defined by a focal length um, as I just did up here. And they can also produce real or virtual images and that's shown down below here. So here's our object. Uh, now it's a pine tree instead of an arrow. Um, and we look at the rays that are coming out of the top of the pine tree um, going towards a concave mirror. And what you see is, uh, you know, for example, the parallel uh, ray goes through the focal point which is right here. And uh, the ray that goes to the center emerges at exactly the same angle, so that's there. And the ray that goes through the focal point before it hits the mirror emerges parallel. And so you see that those three rays you know, meet right over here at point P prime. So that will show you where the tip of the image is going to be. This is a real image because this light here is actually coming out of the image location. Over here we have a, uh, a convex mirror. And what you see is that uh, if you trace the, the rays, similarly to the way um, we just traced them for the convex mirror, uh, sorry, the concave mirror, um, you will get a virtual image uh, appearing in the mirror um, behind, they'll appear as though it's behind the mirror, and it'll be in this case, uh, smaller in, uh, in size than the object. So this is a, a real image uh, over there on the left and over on the right, it's a virtual image because the light is not actually uh, coming from the image. Okay. So just as with uh, lenses, we can write down uh, something similar to the lens equation called the mirror equation. Um, it looks identical to the lens equation. Uh, the definitions of S and S prime and F are similar, but not identical. In particular, um, the focal length of a mirror is given by its radius of curvature divided by two. And there's a sign convention over here. Again, uh, you're not required to memorize this. Um, it is on the formula sheet and I recommend having it in front of you. Make sure you maintain the sign convention as you're working through these problems. And finally, the magnification 
minus S prime over S has the same form as for lenses. So let me do this uh, example problem uh, for a spherical mirror with an object that's 40 centimeters in front of a concave mirror that has a focal length of 20 centimeters. So I'm going to draw um, some rays here to try to figure out what's gonna happen. So here's uh, a ray going parallel to the axis. When that bounces off of the mirror, what's it gonna go through? Please answer in the chat if you know the answer. Right, it's gonna go through F. So it's gonna go down like this through the focal point and continue on. How about the ray that goes through F initially and then hits the mirror? How is it going to emerge from the mirror? In what direction is it gonna be going? Anybody know? It's gonna go parallel, very good. Parallel to this uh, central axis, which is indicated by this dashed line. That's what that uh, dashed line is called, the central axis. So it's gonna come out parallel to the central axis, looking something like this. So we can already see uh, where the tip of the image arrow is going to be. It's gonna be right there. So it's gonna be pointing down like this. And this is kind of messy there. Um, let me try it with a different uh, color perhaps that might, might clarify things a little bit. So it's gonna look like this. So there's the image arrow. Uh, there is a, uh, a third um, vector, sorry, ray that we can draw, uh, one that goes directly to the center of the mirror and then bounces back out at the same exact angle. That will tell us you know, the same thing, essentially, that the point, the tip of the image arrow is right where we drew it. So that's the graphical um, con construction. And here it is uh, drawn a little more nicely with different colors. So you can see where everything converges uh, right over here. So that's where the image will be. And that'll be a real image because the light is actually coming out of that image. And so now we're gonna do this numerically. So the general expression is uh, one over S, which is 40 centimeters, plus one over S prime. That's what we're trying to find. Equals one over F, which is 20 centimeters. And then we solve for S prime and we get 40. So that's consistent with our ray tracing, namely that the position of the object and the image are at the same distance from the mirror. They're both 40 centimeters away. And finally, we can calculate what the magnification is. That's just uh, minus S prime over S. And so because S prime and S are both 40, we get minus one for the magnification, which says that the arrow is the same size. The image arrow is the same size as the object arrow, but it'll be inverted in direction relative to the object. And that's exactly what we see over here in this drawing. And that's what ray tracing strongly suggested to us would be the case. All right, so I'd like you uh, to do this uh, concept question now, uh, which says that a real image can be created by a spherical mirror, oh, sorry, a real image created by a spherical mirror can only be seen when looking down the central axis, is only visible on a screen in the image plane, can be seen without also seeing the object, cannot be seen in the presence of ambient light, none of the above. All right, get your answers in. Okay, so uh, most people chose uh, C and that is indeed the right answer. Um, let me show you uh, an example of this. Uh, so I have uh, here, uh, two spherical mirrors uh, that sort of fit right on top of one another like this. And if I put a, uh, a 
a little frog shown here uh, inside. So it's inside the mirror at the bottom and then put the other mirror on top, uh, a real image results and you can't see it, but I can. There's a real image of, uh, of a frog on top of this uh, little uh, device. And you can see it more clearly here, I hope. So there's the frog down at the bottom. Um, so the frog is at the bottom of this uh, mirror and this top mirror goes uh, on top of this whole arrangement. And then you end up seeing uh, this real image of the frog sort of sticking up uh, basically in thin air. You can run your finger through it and, and everything. And you can't even see, uh, unless you look directly down, you can't see the, uh, the real frog that's uh, underneath. So you can indeed uh, see a real image without seeing uh, the, the actual object. And uh, another really good example of this, which I won't show here, but I encourage you to go and take a look at, um, has to do with a small flashlight bulb and a spherical mirror. Um, and if you won't go and look at that uh, YouTube and just watch like 20 seconds of it, uh, it's pretty intriguing and you'll understand exactly what's going on. Okay, um, let me do as an example, um, what the image looks like for an object uh, in a spherical mirror. And in this case, we have an object that's 12 centimeters uh, in front of a concave mirror with a focal length of 20 centimeters. So this distance F is 20 centimeters and this distance S is 12 centimeters. And I've drawn a, um, or a copied, I should say, and pasted a figure uh, over on the, the, the lower right which is not quite the same as this example, because uh, in this case, the object is uh, outside of the focal length, whereas in this case, the object is inside the focal length. So I'm waiting for this to update here. Oh, it doesn't, hasn't updated on my screen yet. There we go. Okay. So uh, what I drew was that the uh, object is inside the focal length for this example. So uh, the rays that matter for this particular case is uh, the ray that goes uh, parallel to the axis will bounce off of the mirror and go through the focal point. The ray that goes directly towards the mirror and hits it at 90 degrees is going to, of course, bounce directly back. And the ray that goes uh, to the very center of the mirror right along the axis will go out at an angle that's equal to the angle that it had coming in relative to the central axis. And then if you look at these three rays, and here is your, uh, your eye looking at those three rays, um, what you will see is that they are coming from this point over here in the upper right-hand side of the figure. That will be the tip of the image arrow. Okay, um, I'd like you to answer this question here uh, that says uh, in the three figures above labeled uh, one, two, and three, um, we have identical spherical mirrors and an object is placed at the three positions shown uh, outside and inside the focal point, that's figures one and three respectively, and right at the focal point, that's figure two, in which cases will an image be formed? Get your answers in, please. All right, uh, most people chose uh, one and three. Um, that's the correct answer. And in case one, what we'll see is a real image. Uh, in case three, see a virtual image. 
And what exactly will we see in case two? Well, to answer that question, um, I'm going to use, uh, do a demonstration here uh, using uh, this spherical mirror. So if you look at uh, your camera, you should be able to see the image in the spherical mirror. You're actually seeing uh, my neighbor's house uh, at the moment. Um, but what I'd like you to look at is the image of this ruler okay, in the mirror. So right now I am outside the focal length of this mirror. And if you look at the curvature, you know, focal length is probably about 10 centimeters or something like that. So I'm outside the focal length at a distance greater than 10 centimeters from the mirror. And the image is uh, upside down. So it's inverted. And then as I move in closer and closer, and eventually get to the focal point, what you will see is ah, trying to figure out the best way to do this. So now, right now, I am at the focal point. You are looking at what an image looks like at infinity. So it's kind of garbled. All right, so here it is an image. Then we go right to the focal point. Yuck, can't see anything. And then if I get inside the focal point, now I can start seeing something again. So now you can see an image. If I get at the focal point, then the image is at infinity. So that's what infinity looks like, everybody. You saw it here first. All right. So I'd like to do, uh, I'd like to do one last uh, example here uh, involving uh, an object that's 30 centimeters in front of a convex mirror. So the reflecting surface here is on the right. Um, and it has a focal length of minus 20 centimeters. And we're gonna locate the image first using ray tracing, uh, and then we'll do it numerically. So here are two rays that we could use uh, to figure out the uh, location of the image. So the first one in blue, uh, goes in parallel to the axis, which is shown as this uh, dashed line. So that's the, the main axis there. So this blue ray comes in parallel, and then it goes out along a direction as though it was coming from the focal point. The red line um, heads towards the focal point, and because of that, it emerges parallel to the main axis. And now we can just extrapolate these two back, and you can see that they intersect um, right over here. And so that is where the uh, tip of the image arrow is going to be. Can anyone tell me, is this a real or a virtual image? Put it in the chat. That's right, this is virtual. The light is not actually coming from there. Light looks like it's coming from behind the mirror, but obviously it isn't. Um, we can do uh, numerically uh, the same problem and hopefully verify what we just saw with ray tracing. So numerically, we use that expression there, um, just as for lenses. Um, the object is at 30 centimeters, so um, that's what S is. S prime is what we're trying to find. And the focal point, the focal length is minus 20 centimeters following the convention that was shown earlier. And if you put all these things together, uh, you can solve for S prime as minus 12 centimeters. So that kind of makes sense. So the object is 30 centimeters out in front of the mirror and the image is 12 centimeters behind it, hence the minus 12. So the ray tracing is consistent there. And the magnification factor, which is minus S prime over S, is 0.4, which is correct on two levels. First, it's positive. So that means that the, uh, that the image is in the same orientation as the object. So they're both pointing up. And secondly, um, the 0.4 factor says that it's going to be 40% as large as the object, which 
you know, the ray tracing suggests that uh, that is indeed the case. Okay, um, there are some extra examples in here that you may find useful. Uh, I'll just post them to the slides. Uh, and at that, I'll call it a day and suggest to any of you who haven't already voted that you should do so. Please vote if you can. Okay, I'll stick around for a few more questions. Uh, otherwise, have a good day. Uh, sir, about the lens for uh, lens maker formula, n minus one one by r one minus one by r two. Yeah. R one is the first uh, first side where the um, light hits, or it's the second side from where the light comes out. Um, which is R1 and which is R2? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, good question. My guess, uh, I'd have to verify this by looking at how the equation is derived, is that uh, R1, usually uh, you have a lens and uh, an an object over on the right, so an image over on the left. So this uh, side over here gives you R1 and over here is R2. Okay, so first surface is R1, right? Like, uh... Yeah, this first surface over here on the, the first surface that goes through on the left-hand side of the lens has a radius of curvature R1. And the second surface that it goes through on the uh, right-hand side of the lens has a radius of curvature R, R2. Okay, thanks. But uh, yeah. don't quote me. I think in the textbook, uh, it goes through in more detail. And yeah, there may be, maybe I've gotten that just completely wrong, but I think that's probably the, the, the right convention. Okay, thanks. I will look into it then. Okay. Thanks, sir. Yep. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Any other questions? Okay, goodbye everybody. <laughs>